Hi, everybody. Good morning. Hi. And uh, I'm Amy, and this is Jeff. Hi. Um, I know it's your early morning, so thank you very much for coming and joining this uh, this sharing. Um, today we are going to talk about mainly two projects that we did during these years, and it's about sound and sound cultures. But before entering these two projects, I would like to um, uh, introduce a little bit about our space. Because the because these sound curatorial projects um, has a deep relationship with where we are and the context of Taiwanese history and also the maybe sound scene history in Taiwan. So may I use a little bit of time that uh, introduce our space uh, first? I will share that the... if it, you listen here, uh, real sound is uh, because our Case here. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry. Sorry for that. He wants to Cat, join. Cats are always welcome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So we share the screen now. Okay. Um, we're going to start, and our space uh is the Q project space. It's found in. 2010, and it's founded by two of us. Um, this is the first one uh, independent nonprofit space that based in Taipei that focusing on curatorial uh, projects. That means this uh, before we have a so-called alternative space, mostly is artist run space or the artist collective. And we are the first one space that the uh, uh, is curator founded. So we're pretty much focusing on the curatorial project that we can we can explore here. Um, so the, the formation of this space, it's not only about the physical space, but also through the practicing that we have to think about what is uh, what is alternative space, because we always been thought or titled alternative space in Taipei. And this is the question we still trying to answer in our times. What is alternative space and alternative to what? So this is the two things, main things that, uh, that uh, motivated us. First one is how, alternative to what and how to do it. So this is the first challenging that uh, as an independent space, we have to figure out. And the second one is that the know-how. That means that in our times, we're, we keep thinking that if not, uh, if not obey the, the, how to say, the traditional rules for producing, for producing, art projects, how can we do that? These divided into two parts. One is the philosophical parts and the other one is the very practical parts that how could we uh, have fundings or how could we invite people to join in? Um, so it's about how and know how. So for 12 years, we've been practicing this and we are going to entering the 13th year. So if we want to define what the cube is doing, is that thinking through practices. Without practices, we can't know what is alternative to and what we are going to um, bring to people, what is a curatorial thinking behind. And the second one is important that we understand through encounters. So every project we did that involves so many people and from different fields of cultures. It's not only about artists. We also work with a lot of uh, uh, cultural activists, uh, scholars, or we work with uh, people who sell the things in the traditional markets. Okay, so this is the two main, um, how to say, the core that the, why we want to start this alternative space and what we are doing. 
Now you see the physical space in the picture. This is a, a where we are. It's a very old apartment building located in the south part of Taipei. Um, it's built in the 1960s. So it's about like a 50 some years old apartment. These kind of buildings in Taipei is already uh, ready to get into the rubbish, uh, get into the historical garbage. Because uh, now we started the, the gentrification wave from the 90s. So until 2000s, these kind of old uh, uh, hotels, um, no one will go there. So it gives us the space that we can rent it with a very cheap rent. So what about the neighborhood of the space? This is the Google map. You can see our space is the red dot. And we are in the middle of a night market. Taiwan is very famous for the night market scene. So in the night market, um, why there's so many night markets? Because we have 10% of population of Taiwan that relies on the uh, in, in normal economy. That means the gray area that people can make living by selling food, by selling small things on the streets. So it's full of the street street uh, vendors in the night market and the food, food stands. So we are in the middle of this night market. And surrounding us is the, is the campus area. So you see the biggest part here. So, this part is the is Taiwan University. Basically, where it's like a 10 minutes walking. So here is the campus area. And uh, we are next to the MRT, Gongguan MRT. We're here and Night Market and the cinema and the most famous live house, music live house of Taipei, The Wall. And then 10 minutes walking, you will get to Treasure Hill Artist Village. I'll talk about it a bit later. And the water park, it's a, a how to say, a tap water system um, um, place. And Shreyan Market, it's a traditional market. And now you see more live houses in this area because, because this is the university area. So these, this is the origin of the indie music uh, of Taiwan where it comes from, it's in this area. Um, so you will have Riverside Lifehouse, it's still surviving. Um, and also a lot of bookstores and a cafe around this part. And then which is also a very senior life house with uh, female singers and the female bands playing and performing in here. So this is where we are. And I'm growing up, I grew up from this area. So actually I grew up with the history of the indie music scene of Taiwan here. In the 90s, we called it underground, but now there's no one wants to use the term underground. So everybody use independent music or independent, like us, independent space, okay. So this is where we are. So this is the water park. Um, you will, 10 minutes walking from our space, you will see a pump machinery building. It's a colonial colonial building. Now it's a museum. Why uh, I want to put this here, it's because this is the origin of the modernization process of Taipei, because this is the first uh, tap watering system place here in, in Gongguan area. And then, um, Taipei, Taiwan University, Taiwan National Taiwan University, the big area in the Google map. Um, now it's called National Taiwan University, but from 1928 to 1945, it's Taipei in Empire University. It's built by Japanese colonial government. And why I put this here? Because this is the origin of the modernization of the education system. It starts from here. And then night market, people make living. 10% of people make their living through these uh, in normal, or I don't know how to say it, 
not normal uh, economy system. And then this is a cinema place still running until now. It's they are our neighbor, and it's being built by a veteran of World War War World War Two uh, since 1966. And then Lifehouse um, from 1990s is a booming, but actually it's from late 80s. We released the martial law in 1987. So after that, it's like a booming of independent everything. So you have independent music, independent space, independent everything here booming in Taiwan. Lifehouse is one of them. And then Treasure Hill that I mentioned uh, in the Google map, this is artist village. Now it's an artist village. If you guys are interested in coming to Taiwan to have a residency, this is the place that the, everyone can apply. So every term is like three months. They can offer you the, the residencies here from three months to six months. But before, as you see, these are the uh, these are the place that the in built in the 1960s. Oh, sorry, 1950s. After the KMT, the Nationalist Party um, retreated in Taiwan um, since 1949. So these areas were built by the veterans and the military and the, their family members um, here. So it's all illegal constructions and it becomes legal uh, not until 2000. 10, I think. And then the same time we feel same time, the same time that we start uh, our space. Yeah. And it turned out to be the artist village. Okay. So uh, I think I already give you a background that why we are there and why the location and the geographical and historical context is crucial to our space. And that's the base that uh, we uh, start our practices. And we pretty much focus on sound. And uh, not only because we are all music fans and we all love music and non-music and we love sound. That's the main reason. But the second reason is that we grew up at, uh, from that area. That's the origin of the so-called indie sound of Taiwan. So I think we do, uh, we are very privileged to be located in that area, we bump into musicians, band members, or the mu music collective on the streets at that area. Um, before I introduce the two, the two projects, we want to introduce another project because this project is quite crucial for us. It's a turning point that we started to very much focusing on sound curatorial projects. It's this one, it's called Revitalization of Jai Sound Projects. And it's done by three artists, uh, Yannick Daobi, Xu Yanting, and Cai Wanxuan. And Yannick Daobi is, uh, is a French artist based in Taipei, and he is a field recorder and also a sound artist. And in 2000, 2008, he got a commission by Jai County. Jai County is a, is a county located in the middle of Taiwan and with 80 villages. And he got a commission by the Cultural Bureau, the, the director of the Cultural Bureau. And the, culture, the director of the Cultural Bureau um, asked these three artists to do uh, a sound archive of 18 villages. So, so these artists from zero and until two years later, they collect more than, I think they collect more than 500 episodes of sound of the 18 villages. And just when they almost finished done this project, the director, uh, step down. So the new director um, just cut off and also call, cut off these projects because of the budget reason. And, but the main reason is that he 
he didn't know why they need to show or they, they need to collect a hard drive with hundreds episodes of sounds in it. So no one understand why there was this project happened in Jiayi. So when we talk to the artist, that's already 2012 to 2011. And he told me, and I said, Yannick, Yanting and Wan Xuan, could we start something with sound? And they told me they already have something in their drawers for many years. It's a hard drive and with the sound of 18 villages. And they collected during the past four years. And I said, why it's in the drawers? I said, because no one knows what to do with those hard disks. Even the, even the Culture Bureau of the Jai County, they don't want that. And they just cut off everything. So we started to think about how could we revitalize these? Uh, how could we say the dead sound in the hard disk? So we started to explore that how to curate, how, cur curate the show and with the sound as a main medium and as the as a means of concept. So that's 2011. And at the same year, I curated the Taiwan Pavilion in Venice. So we started to um, try to present the sound archive in the show. But at that time, I don't think the audience, especially the Taiwan audience accept that because for them, the exhibition is always about visual. So how to curate a show without visual but sound is very challenging. Until now, still. Okay, so this is the this is the the Yannick, the Jai Sound Project, the Yannick's uh, installation. So we have zero budget for the show. So, but Yannick is a, is a sound artist with a very high, uh, how to say, standard. <clears throat> yeah, he's full of the sound knowledge and he wants a very professional sound effect. And he also wants a very professional um, uh, listening atmosphere, but we don't have that. We have a concrete, concrete uh, room. That's all. So Yannick told me that uh, why not we choose something from the garbage yard, the abandoned wood panels. And so we use these wood panels to absorb the reflections of sound. And that really works. So we spend zero money and uh, to show this eight channel sound works for the first time. And then we started to organize uh, many uh, talks and the lectures about, about sound. We invite so many people and to discuss the sound context of Taiwan, including music, non-music, uh, oral, oral history or the pop music, all kinds of that. And then we do the, our concert at our balcony and we do the concert to the street people in the night market. Okay, so now these are the background, how we start and how we get into the context of sound in Taiwan. So now we are going to, now we're going to uh, introducing our two projects. The projects uh, we did within the past three years. The first one is Talking Drums Radio. Yeah, okay. So I let uh, Jeff to speak about it and I can translate for him. Yeah. 我在這裡頭我首先要介紹三點,就是什麼是跨國電台,跨國電台是如何建立的和它的設計的過程. Okay, so for this project, I would like to talk about three points that how I uh, start my curatorial thinking. The first is what is Talking Drums Radio? And the second point is the construction of the Talking Drums Radio Studio. And third, how do we design the program? 
，啊，他现他也同时有提供 podcast 的的放送。Okay, so in the in the first two years, this uh this radio is a、uh, both streaming radio, but also we also do podcast program. 啊，他从我们从二零一九年四月四号开始首播。然后到现在为止，已经累积了两百多集，然后总共有七十多位艺术家还有团体，然后有目前为止也累积了六万个 unique 的 list 的聆听者。So Talking Drums Radio started from 2019 April 4th,、mm. and until now we have more than 200 episodes. Um, for these episodes, is that we actually invite different group artists. To joining and to produce the、uh, radio program, so we have now more than two hundred episodes, more than seventy artist group joining, and we have sixty thousand unique listeners until now. 我们每一段节目都大约只有二三十分钟啊。这个原因是因为我们觉得，呃，现在人的聆听注意力应该很难超。很难集中聆听三十分钟以上，所以我们把我们的节目时间都缩限在三十分钟以内。There is not many rules for producing these、uh, radio programs. The only one regulation is that the length is no more than thirty minutes, because we found that the nowadays people's concentration time, uh, thirty minutes probably is the maximum duration. 这个是我们广播电台的首页哈，我们的节目是都在这里头放送，同时我呃也有透过 podcast 聆听。Okay, so this is the web page of Talking Drums Radio. So all the programs you will find on this page, you can listen. Uh, the first two years you can listen the streaming programs, but now we already stop the streaming part. So now you can listen to all programs through the podcast. 对，你可以看到现在在播放什么样的节目，也可以看到接下来的时间表就在右边这边的。So you will see the right side here. It's a it's a timetable. So you will see every day, uh, the different programs broadcasting. 好，下一页。啊，这就是我们的录音室哈。我们建用一个非常 low budget 的方式建了一个其实非常专业的录音室。So in 2019, uh, because we wanted to do the 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 radio program, so we built a recording room, uh, a radio room in our space. It's a low budget but very professional recording room. 好，下。好，这个就是我们录音室的内部。Okay, this is the interior scene of this、uh, radio space. 哎，不要，还没有讲完。哦、oh, ，先要提的就是说，虽然我们做的是一个录音室电台，可是无论如何，它是一个艺术计划。Though this is a radio program, but we want to remind that the, in the end, it's an art project. 所以说，我们这个录音室在头不一方，我们不是一个常设录音室，然后我们也不是用。最呃很普通的方式去构想这个录音室，不是用很普通，不是很很那种一般标准化的录音室。Okay, so you cannot treat this、uh, radio recording room, uh, as like a standard standard recording room. 所以说，你看我们在这里头，因为这是艺术计划，我们做了一些像壁纸这样装饰，让这个一般认为是冷硬的录音室有了一点不一样的感觉。So that's why we put carpet, we put the, we put the wallpaper to make this room、um, more comfortable and friendly to people who wants to use it. Yeah. Oh, the shy. Okay. So. Ah. 然后我这边介绍一下我们的节目内容。然后呃，我们的节目是虽然是现。是一个串流的线上版广播平台，所以它的设计上面，我们也希望完全比照，呃，一般的，我在形式上面遵循广播电台的形式。This is an online radio, but when we designed it, it's based on the, uh, the real radio program. Yeah, 所以一般 radio program 的形式会有什么呢？它会有真点报时，会有音乐。
然后会有节目，这样子串成一个节目流。Okay, so the flow should be based on the real radio program. So there will be like jingle between two programs, and there will be the host who who introduce the next program. 但是我们又不可能有这样子二十四小时的经费和人力去做这个事情，所以我们设计一个机制，是完全自动化的城市去播放这些节目，然后会有 Siri Siri 说话的 DJ 去介绍节目。And because we don't have the budget to hire、uh, the host or or hire someone who can do this for twenty four hours a day and seven and seven days a week. So we designed a system that with、uh, we use AI、yeah. to to do the job. So、uh, we have a endless、uh, producing music for the jingle, and there is a Siri DJ introducing the program. Ah, we would hope to have music in the program, but because of the very strict licensing law, and because of doing it this way, it is too difficult. 太普通的，不像是一个艺术计划所做的，所以我们在这边对于音呃歌节目之间的音乐，我们这个想法就是请一个艺术家做了一个机器，它会自动生成永远不停的音乐生产机。So for about the jingles between two programs, it usually the music, but for music you want to play on the radio, there is the issue about the about the copyright. So mostly you cannot. Play any any music that the already people know. So we design a a, a system. It's a self generated music, and designed by an artist. 然后这个声音生产机器它会依照每一天星期几，然后和它是呃几点钟，然后和当天的天气去改变它的音乐内容。So these the content of this music is、uh, designed by the artist, and how these music were made, it、uh, depends on the condition of every day, like temperature or the weather or the or the what time is it. So all these、uh, references will influence the the music, and it will never uh, uh, repeat. Yeah. Yeah. 然后至于我们的节目内容呢，有分许多种，包括说有一般的有像脱口秀啊，还有那个访谈啊，还有歌仔戏这些。So in these two、uh, hundred episodes program we have now, it includes talk show, interview, Taiwanese opera, experimental radio drama, audio documentary, experimental sound. 对，也会也会有这些实验室的声响。这这些实验的音乐和实验的一些广播剧。和一些像声音纪录片，这些都是在台湾一般广播电台都是不可能听得到的。Yeah, and all these sound and program you will never ever have the chance to listen to it on other radio program or other radio station. So this is quite unique、um, that we produce these、uh, programs. 对，因为在台湾对于广播限制是有很长的历。呃，广播电波广播有非常长的历史，所以这也限制了台湾人对广播节目应该要怎么做的想象力。像台湾就没有校园电台，也没有，也很少有所谓地下电台。Why why we want to mention this is because for long time, for decades, we have a very severe restrictions and rules to control radio wave. Until today, radio wave is not free. It's not. It's controlled by the government. So people can't not to have the radio station by themselves. So、um, what people can imagine, what will, what programs can be can be played on radio? It's quite limited because for the decades we don't have that kind of varieties on the radio. Ah, this is also why we want to do this project. So this is the reason why we want to start this program. 因为我们希望邀请来自于不同领域的文化呃创造者或者是文化行动者去共同想象，如果使用广播这个形式来创作音乐的话，你会用什么方法去做这个节目 ？So this is the main issue and the core question that we when we invite uh people to join and we ask them 
how can you imagine a radio show that uh, just using sound as a means of the of your uh, of your art? Then what can you do? And can you imagine different kinds of uh, sound program or radio program? Okay, this is the picture is the uh, the jingle music we just mentioned. So this is a it's a program. It's a program. Yeah, it's a robot. A robot. A robot. A robot. Okay. Okay. Ah, the next picture. Ah, then why we call this talking drum? Why we call this program talking drums? Uh, talking drum. It's a Chinese musical instrument. Ah, but it has a history. So talking drums is the instruments that you see in, in the picture that in the Africa it's a kind of a drums they use for communication. 在19世他19世纪有一个故事就是19世纪有一个英国的船长去非洲探险,他发现非洲人会利用这个鼓说话和做远端的通信。Um it's a story about uh uh a captain sailing from Europe to Africa. And this captain found that these African um, people. people, they can communicate. Uh, they can communicate with uh, people in the distance, in the very far distance, just only using drums. Mm. So they can use the drum beats and the sound of drum to communicate with people are far away, even a kilometers away. So this is the earliest broadcast before, even before the invention of radio. But itself, it's an instrument, so it's it can produce music. So this kind of thing, So we think this is interesting. Something that can broadcast, communicate people's emotions, messages. Yeah. And the music. And the music. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 然后我们这个是我们建筑的录音室的过程 okay. So these are just some pictures showing you how we built this uh, radio room 因为这个计划只做两年 所以我们必须要只能用非常便宜的价钱完成它 因为终究它要是被摧毁掉的 Yeah, we, 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 we do this process for two years So after two years, it's been already removed Yeah, 所以它不能太... And you, and we build it with a very low budget. Yeah. So these are the. Ah, here is the TAB. We spent a lot of time to choose the yeah, we spent time to choose the to select the wallpaper. But it really is very effective because it makes the recording studio residents in this like a tropical environment for a long long time. Yeah, because of this wallpaper, people can stay there more than six hours. Otherwise, they don't want to stay in that. <laughs> because there's a very uh, uh, limited air conditioned facilities. Because for, for the recording, you have to turn off the air condition. <laughs> okay. Okay, so Okay, so these are the equipments, not very high end, not very expensive, but we use these uh, equipments to provide them to the to anyone who is interested in doing the recordings. Okay. Shareware. So this is a share shareware we use for recording. Okay. Yeah, these uh, these uh, uh, the these panel gray panels you see on the wall is all DIY acoustic panels to absorb the reflections. Oh, 
So these are the topics uh, Jeff just mentioned that uh, we invited people to join in. Basically, uh, we have these uh, topics discussing with them. First one is to reimagine the radio as a medium of creation. And second, rethinking broadcast as technologies of sound, technology of message and emotions. And third, reconstruction found sound. We actually do four times open call. And we open call, open call for, for these programs. So these producers come, they are artists, they are poets, they are musicians, they are theater critics, they are from different fields of culture. Yeah. Okay. Okay. In the very beginning, we are very worried about um, people of they don't know how to record or uh, where they can get the knowledge of recording. So we gave three or four times workshop and we invited Yannick to give this uh, uh, workshop uh, to teach these, uh, to these, teach these people how to record. But in the end, we found this is, uh, this is, we don't need to do this because we found nowadays people can do the recordings from their cell phone and they know how to do it right away. 不过这个在2018年是还没有那么普遍的事情。Yeah, but in 2018, still people come to the workshop to, to yeah. learn how to do the 这边要顺便讲一下,就是我和Amy其实在2008年就自己录过Podcast的。Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, me and Amy, we started our podcast program. We, we produced our own podcast in 2008. 对，因为我们那时候很流行做blogger和录自己的podcast上传啊。Yeah, yeah, because at that time it's a very trendy thing to be a blogger, and also yeah, small, small group people. Uh, yeah. yeah, and also small group of people they are doing their own podcast. 那时候就很多人问我们是怎么做的，因为其实大部分人对于操作这些。but at that time there is a barrier uh, for people to using this software and to know how to make your own podcast. And in 2019, But surprisingly, just 10 years later, uh, we found people can can learn or they know how to use this software right away. Immediately, they know how to use it and they use it smoothly. Unlike 10 years before in 2008, it's such a difficult thing for all of us to become a podcast. Yeah, yeah. So you can go to the next one. And this is a traditional Taiwan traditional Taiwan group. Yeah, and this picture, they are the group of the Taiwanese opera. They are amateur Taiwanese opera group. Uh, group. So when they come to the recording room, they, I think they, they yeah, they learn how to, how to record immediately. Yeah. Okay, how? How? And, so, uh, 这个把整个录音室搬到摩卡台北里头展出 So after two years, in 2020, we represent this uh, radio room in Moka Taipei as a sound installation, actually. Yeah. Yeah, so it's 100% rep, uh, represent that studio. But change the wallpaper. <laughs> we just changed the wallpaper. Yeah. So if you guys are interested in Talking Drums Radio, please go to our website. We're still producing new programs. Last week, we just launched a new program. Okay, sorry.
Okay, we don't have much time. Um, could we have a bit more time to introducing South Meridians? Yes, it's no problem. Okay. okay. Okay, South Meridians is an ongoing project starting from 2020. It's based on the project we did in 2014. We co-curate a show it's called alter, alter, yeah, Altering yeah. Nativism. Yeah. yeah, and that show is a research curatorial project to research the Taiwanese sound cultures since 1945. So in 2020, we expand that project into a, into a project that we invited more people to join in. So we expand this research map and we invited Taiwan, the Philippines, Malaysia, and the Singapore curators to join in. Okay, so now I just want to show you why it's called Sound Meridians. So the meridians is the concept from the Chinese uh, medicine that people in human bodies, there are meridians that uh, the energy flows that that makes the people living. But from the Western anatomy, it's difficult to find uh, meridians inside your body. But from the Chinese perspective or the Chinese medicine perspective, there is the energy flow in your body that makes you alive. So we use this as a metaphor. It's like a sound waves or the sound cultures in the society that you didn't see it is invisible, but this, these energies makes the culture uh, becomes uh, becomes cultures, and it's not the it's not the narration or the historical context written by the power, but oh, but from the memories and the experience of people. 然后在这个计划，我们邀请了来自四个国家、四个不同地区的、有四个不同的计划。So there are four projects in uh, South Meridians. Actually, in these projects, South culture is such a huge topic. It's such a huge research field. So how could we uh, invite the curators to join in? All they need to do is just telling one story. So it's based on the story they tell, and we ask for one story from your place. That's all. So these four curators, what they curate is a story about sound in their place. So in Taiwan, it's a song story. The, the old song is called Raining Night Flowers. It's done by the artist Chao Ming Deng. And the Philippines, we invited the scholar, uh, Dayang Yarola, and she's the scholar um, on the South culture of Philippines. So he she curated this Takinti. Takinti means um, gathering place. Okay, it's their language. It means gathering place. So in this part, she curated the, the history of South cultures since 90s uh, in Manila. And Singapore, we invited uh, we invited the Chi Wei Yuan to curate this part. So she, he talks about the story of an uh, electronic musician, uh, Cao Jie. And this musician is is forgotten by people because he dies of cancer in the early age of forties. And they wanted to re-explore the, the the importance of this uh, of this musician and how he influenced the electronic music development in Singapore. In Malaysia, we invited an artist who based in Taipei, Osio Yi, to curate. Um, this, this story is about the national anthem of Malaysia. It's a copied song, um, but all 
versions, all original, other original version of that song got banned in Malaysia. Only their anthem, national anthem, can be played in Malaysia. So it's about this. Okay. Okay. We we'll probably quick go through these images because we don't have we don't have much time. And this is a this is a rainy life flower. Rainy life flowers uh, and a timetable of a sound apparatus in Taiwan. And it's the it's done by Jeff. And in this uh, in this timetable and the history timetable it's talking about the development of these um, uh, technological objects invented along with the sound culture history development it's an artwork from Chow yeah Minh this Deng. is the artwork from artist Deng Zhao Ming. Um, you see it you see a room in this room you see the carpet the carpet is about a song raining light flowers and you see the silver dots on the ground floor, that's small mirrors. And these mirrors uh, represent a name. So this carpet is the bio of that song. It's a completely bio that's uh, written by the artist about that song. So when you sing, when you, when you go into this room, you are in, you are in the history of this song and you hear the song, uh, you hear the song sing by all different singers yeah. during the past 80 years. And these are the Taking Ting curated by Da Yang. It's more like a, like a sound archive and the, the documentations. And these are the, this is a pop-up. This is a, a records pop-up. Um, Melanton. Melanton records pop-up. It's a, it's a record store yeah. happening once a while mm -hmm. in different places, sometimes in the, in the department store, sometimes in the shopping mall. Mm -hmm. Um, so this pop store, this time at Mocha Taipei, they show the history and the documentations about Cao Jie. And because it's about the Cao Jie's electronic dream, so the whole installation uh, is like a, you, when you're walking, it's like you're walking in, walking, uh, in, a, dream. in a dream. Very unreal. It's yeah. very surreal. Surreal, yeah. yeah. And they also invited different artists to, to re remix. interpret and remix Cao Jie's music. And this is the Silver Noise and curated by So Yi and talking about the history of the history of the national anthem of Malaysia. And you can listen to, you can hear the different versions of the national anthem of Malaysia, but you cannot hear them in Malaysia. Yeah, okay. Also some text on the wall. Yes. Yeah. And also we are, we're still ongoing. This project is still ongoing. Now we will making it a online curatorial project. So we will invite more curators to joining and now the, the website is under construction. We're going to launch it very soon in a week. Yeah. So that's about uh, the sound meridians. Yeah. So. Okay, so I hope it's clear. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> really? like very fast. That's great. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's, since it's just about 10, let's jump in. Um, anyone from the public audience who'd like to comment, ask a question, either you can do it again in chat or you can just um, unmute yourself and, and ask directly. Were all of these projects that you spoke about tonight just showcased there in Taiwan or have they ever been performed in other countries? Like, did the, the, the Singapore uh, pop-up, was that ever performed in Singapore or the Philippines one? Or were each of those artists that were part of your um, 
your group, was that all done in Taiwan only? Um, I believe the, 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 the Philippine part has been shown in Berlin before. Uh, I think it's been shown in Savi contemporary. And so we just, uh, we invited the curator and she basically uh, using the same research, but we basically try to uh, present some parts of that research. So in general, the, the, the showing of, the, of the, the space of the showing is quite the same, but the contents is selected by the curator and us in Taiwan together. So that part I think is been shown somewhere else already. Um, sometimes it's highlighted Jose Maceda because Jose Maceda is the most famous experimental musician in, in the Philippines. So it, it really depends on the curators want to highlight or address which part of the research. Um, but the rest of the the rest of the three parts only showed in Taiwan so far. Yeah, but we we do have the plan to to show these in New York actually. But when we when we would like to visit in New York, that's the 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 COVID happened, so we didn't actually realize that. Actually, we want to work with uh, Elena from from Michigan Gallery. At that time, we tried to move, uh, try to travel this show to New York. So maybe uh, now the COVID uh, situation now release, and maybe we can rethink about it in the future. Um, Caitlin, you uh, typed into chat. Do you want to just unmute yourself and, and ask? No? OK, um, the question, how has the reception been to the AI generated radio? Has there been a lot of on the ground input from the public? How has the radio sounds changed through the months and years? Uh, yeah. It's a, it, the function of the of the of the AI generated uh, sound yeah. is uh, background music for in between programs. So the function is like Musa. Some people like that, but some people thought that that's boring. And we we do have these uh, two kinds of re responses yeah. from the audience from the listeners. Yeah. Uh, someone tell us that he can hear that music for a whole day. If uh, sometimes our robot, uh, because <laughs> our robot make mistakes often. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. So <laughs> so, so uh, if the uh, if the time 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 the time if the the next show didn't didn't didn't, didn't play, play. So, so the music will last the 24 hours until next day 